Oh, hi everyone. Don't mind me, just stir in the pot over here. Welcome back everyone to Wait Your Turn. It's Jordan. Today, we're diving in, we're getting to the root of the matter of the controversy, and we are going to be discussing, or I will be discussing to you through this video, about the monsters of past and future for Tenny Grail, the fall of Avalon. Is it worth it? Is it worth all the ado about nothing? Well, watch this video. Let's find out. What's up everyone, welcome back to Wait Your Turn, I'm Jordan, and today we are looking at monsters of past and future for Tainted Grail, the fall of Avalon, the very uh, <laughs> divisive, divisive, and controversial board game that has hit most of our homes. For those of you who are still waiting for the language edition, sit tight, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very interesting experience. I'm going to be filming my own review very shortly, but without any further ado, let's just jump ahead of the gun and talk a little bit about the 20 unique, beautiful debatable, uh, sculpts that Awaken Realms has put forth for the Guardian encounters that you will be encountering in the future expansions that are going to be coming with Wave 2. So I'm going to just go ahead and <laughs> step past all the angry and disturbingly, mm, what, what are the adjectives I'm looking for, just awful, mean-spirited uh, comments that have been running through the Kickstarter campaign. I realize that some of your frustration is valid. There's usually not enough money to go around, honestly, and that is always a concern for everyone here at Wait Your Turn and worldwide and whatever place you may be. But uh, let us not be upset about free things and let us uh, uh, kind of, you know, take a sip, step back and realize that this was going to happen. I think everyone here, whether you're angry or you're not angry, or you're just kind of ambivalent about it, you all love Awakened Realms. You want them to succeed. You want to see a good product. And uh, let's just be happy that they're releasing more things. Um, I, obviously, if uh, you did not intend to spend another maybe 100 pounds, 50 pounds, but you didn't intend to spend much more than your all-in Sundrop pledge for Awakened Realms, then this might be an unwanted surprise. But for me, I don't know. I don't know really what to say about it. Other than the fact that these, these miniatures aren't even that great, so <laughs> we're going to get down to the nitty and gritty should you go ahead and purchase these monsters of Avalon. So, let me first start with the big picture. Let me first start with the big picture, and let's just go back to the original monsters of Avalon uh, 20 miniature set that comes with Wave 1 for the original set of Tainted Grail. Those original miniatures, those original 20 miniatures. Um... Were they actually worth it? <laughs> I think I made a video way back when saying that they, they're they cool, but they're definitely not, you know, necessarily worth it. Um, and now having played Tainy Grail for, I don't know, I've, I haven't been super hardcore about it. I can't even get past chapter four myself. But having played Tainy Grail for about maybe, what, 20, 30 hours or so, it was a, an honestly kind of embarrassingly long amount of time to try and get to chapter four. That's for another video, but for someone who's been playing with all the Guardians, uh, when they do show up, because they, you, they don't really even appear that often, to be honest. They kind of like appear, and then you kill them. Either that, or they appear, and they kill you, and then they might remain on the board, but usually your, your game is over, you run away, wounded, and uh, a broken man or woman. So, my current rating or I don't know if I'll, I'll do ratings, but my current review on Monsters of Avalon is, I, I have a bunch of problems with it. The pros, they're cool looking. <sighs> the quality, you know, varied quite a bit. I mean, some were obviously really cool, like Doomwing, that they haven't even showed us a picture of or a render of. That's gonna be a cool sculpt, obviously. But with a lot of Awakened Realms campaigns, it's usually only two, three miniatures that are like really cool and the rest are kind of garbage. And in this case, I'd almost tip that most of these miniatures are pretty much <laughs> garbage looking. But anyway, uh, <laughs> working rounds if you're watching, love your work. But anyway, Monsters of Avalon, were they worth it? No, not really. They kind of show up and then they vanish. They don't even really, they're not really tied into the story very well. The encounter system is just like, guardian, boom, in your face. And then you defeat them and they're gone. And you, you wait so long to actually use these miniatures in the game, and they just don't appear as often, fortunately, as you would uh, hope or be worried that they might appear. So, this is kind of a jumbled up review, isn't it? But Monsters of Avalon, the original 20 miniatures, they did not see much play. 
I'd say for the 40 hours, maybe 30 hours of play that I actually did, I saw three, maybe four of those 20 miniatures actually hit the board. And I haven't even gone, you know, to the other chapters of the game where those bigger, badder miniatures finally come into play. They just weren't very permanent or even memorable aspects of the game. Those miniatures were very, very extra. I mean, honestly, you could use them in other games, but, you know, that's that's not me, that's not what I do. I really wanted to see them really thrive in Tainted Grail because these are Tainted Grail miniatures. Where else will I use a tentacle-headed leech uh, druid, you know? what? I don't, I don't really, uh, it's, uh, it's not in my wheelhouse. But, were they cool? Yeah. Were they fun to paint? Actually, yeah, some of them were pretty good. Uh, but as with a lot of Awaken Realms projects, is usually maybe three or four or five miniatures that really resonate with me, and then the rest are kind of, you know, put to the wayside. And so, we're going to jump into looking at the Monsters of Avalon Past and Future, and that's right, they're for the past and future, so it's 20 miniatures split for both the future expansion and the past expansion. The campaign that will happen after the core game, and the expansion that will occur before the core game chronologically. You, you'll understand. I, th I think most of you understand, right? We're all, we're all Awakened Realms Tainted Grail backers. Or maybe we're not. I don't know. Is that insensitive? But we're looking at Tainted Grail, Monsters of Avalon, past and future. Could you imagine the controversy if they released another 20 miniatures for the future or the past or the Red Death expansion? <coughs> that would blow my mind. <laughs> There'd be so many angry people. So we're looking at monsters of Avalon past and future. They have some pretty weird sculpts. I mean, if Etherfields was weird, they're just really starting to crank the dial up on just absolute, I don't even know if monstrosity is the word. I think it's mishmash. That is, that is the word that comes to mind when I'm looking at these monsters of Avalon past and future. They're just mishing and mashing. I feel like they're getting a little bit confused whether they're in the Tainted Grail universe or the Etherfields universe. There's a hair on my nose. But um, we're looking at Tainted Grail. And as you can see here, it's got an awesome box, beautiful art. Um, and most of this update actually, I mean, we're looking mainly at the Monsters of Avalon, but most of this update is just, you know, to remind people to buy more things on the Pledge Manager. So let's walk through the update and let's take a look at these monsters. So let's start with their first miniature announcement, and that is they really wanted to represent a miniature as the Pale Lady. Uh, long before she was known as the Lady of the Lake, this is going to be covering one of the outcasts of her race, of which she is also an outcast. Um, they do not even include a picture here, unfortunately, so they're just going to kind of keep you on edge, as a lot of these miniatures haven't even been uh, produced as renders yet. So they've kind of jumped the gun, they've announced that there are 20 new miniatures, and yet they haven't even been completed. So we can't even make a fully fair uh, estimate that we would even want these miniatures, which is kind of strange. It's strange that they would announce that you can get 20 more miniatures, but half of those miniatures haven't even been conceptualized, or the uh, graphic design, the art of those miniatures hasn't even been finalized. Not even these sketches are final p pieces of art, and needless to say, the miniature 3D render of these monsters have not been produced yet. So I think that is probably one of the biggest thing I'd be, uh, be potentially upset about. I don't really get upset about many things, and uh, <laughs> you can feel free to express your angry opinions down low, uh, down below in the comments, but uh, please keep it civil. So that is very strange that they're announcing all these miniatures, and yet, for some, we only have graphic, uh, just, you know, sketches, sketch work of them, and we don't even have the picture of the actual miniature. So whether you're a, an, a painter, whether you're even a normal backer, it is very difficult to know if you want to buy 20 miniatures, of which half of which the coolest miniatures haven't even been revealed yet. So a lot of these miniatures that we're going to be looking at, they're going to be the uh, the grab bag of miniatures, the, you know, the not as cool ones that Awaken Realm sneaks into their bundle boxes of miniatures. And uh, honestly, sometimes the quality is really kind of bad on some of these. So, take that with a grain of salt. You can see my other video where I reviewed uh, my painted Tainted Grail miniatures. It's up there. I was really tired that day. Sorry about that. I look gross. But anyway, the next guardian is Kelpie. Um, this is <laughs> looks very much like Selkie. Perhaps they're siblings. But this is basically a nightmarish seaweed horse that if you try to ride, it will absorb you into its skin through the process of mitosis. Um, I don't see why anyone would even want to ride this nightmarish 
I mean, look at those spikes on its back. I would not want to be riding that. And someone needs to tell that lady she is riding this horse backwards. I don't think she's ever ridden a horse before. Huge, huge problems. What is going on here? Why is she riding it backwards? Awaken Realms, I mean, we should really correct this. We should put this to a poll. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway. Um, so yeah, the Kelpie is just like a weird one. I kind of like the design, the skeletal skull. But I mean, it's nothing we haven't seen before. The weird bear with the skull of head, with the worms and the tangle worms with skull heads. I mean, it is very tainted grail. I mean, I can get behind it. It's not something I really want a miniature for. And you know, honestly, if you're using your miniatures for other games, why not just use your miniatures from other games for tainted grail? Problem solved, right? Then you could stop uh, buying all these miniatures. Just kidding. That's not a personal attack. Or maybe it is, I don't know. You let me know. Another example of folkloristic. Wow, they're making up words when... We should, we should leave the update right to Kristoff. Anyway, another example of folk, folkloristic inspiration is the Diargadu. This a Gaelic prototype of the vampire called the Red Thirst is elusive and dangerous, leaving only drained corpses in her wake. Um... Alright, and so the Red Thirst, the dreaded Gaelic vampire of Tainted Grail, I'm not sure it's going to be the future or the past, probably the past, is a grail holding bathrobe. Um, she has some chains, she is basically the ghost of Christmas future, so potentially she will be in Tainted Grail's future, that would make a lot of sense, but here she is offering you a drink when she herself thirsts for your blood. Interesting, almost a poetic irony in that miniature. Is that worth getting? Hmm, maybe. Um, I might convince myself at the end of this video, but that is the Diard Du. Um, I wish there was a pronunciation guide, but man, my uh, pronunciation and my terrible American accent just is not going to do it any justice. But here it is. It's a very aerial. I kind of like. There's some nice rips, some details, some nice chains, but uh, and there's some nice details here down below on the actual sheet and shawl. However, um, looking at Etherfields and just how complex. Uh, their detail work can actually get on miniatures. It's very unfortunate that some of these symbols will be consumed by the PVC. So, Awakened Realms uh, actual miniature production, especially for minor miniatures that aren't like the coolest ones or core box, it's it's, it's hard for me to uh, attest to the final quality of these, of these miniatures. I expect maybe 80 to 90 percent of what you see here in terms of quality work. So, if you enjoy, you kind of like squint your eyes and you blur it out. That's probably what you're going to get in the final. Uh, final form. So, and these are Wave 2 items that they're just announcing. What is it? Maybe uh, it's it's February right now and Wave 2 should arrive in July or something like that. They're giving themselves five months to uh, pull off 20 supposedly highly detailed uh, miniature sculpts. Kind of unlikely. That is the Diargadu. You can see there's a very detailed uh, tombstone underneath her. This person is very dead. <laughs> That's basically what they're saying there. Moving on, the fourth of our new guardians, fourth, I only covered three, right? I only covered three. Interesting. Is the result of human interactions with the weirdness the manipede, the human centipede? I'm sure you wanted that in Tainted Grail, and there you go. With a bow on top, the manipede. Man, part man, part peed. So, manipede is just as disturbing and dangerous. I don't think we really wanted a picture. Um, I don't, nah, I'm not gonna Google search a picture of the human centipede. That's not really what I want tonight. But it is as disturbing and dangerous as its name suggests, and having one stalk you through the map will be an intimidating experience. Once again, Awakening Realms is continuing to do these monster mashups with nature-like elements combined with humanoid elements to create some sort of mishmash. That is the theme, that is the motif, that is the name of the game for this video. In contrast to the Manipede, Wormlings look much less threatening. There's actually a picture of this on the, um, let's see, let me find it. The Wormlings, there they are, just being little Wormlings. Ugh. I actually kind of like that. This is a miniature ordinarily I'd be super excited for because you can see all these tiny little grubbing uh, weird worms that are just so ravenous and there's potential for a lot of detail and careful construction of this miniature that could be potentially really cool and jaw-dropping. But I was very excited for the Twisted one, which was also kind of a minor miniature, and the details just got obliterated. So Awakened Realms doesn't have a very good track record on keeping their miniatures uh, pure and perfect and pristine. So I don't know. It's hard to get excited when the actual miniature quality of this company, you know, it, it lags. They need a lot of time. They need a lot of 
you know, they need greater focus to actually pull off their miniature designs, especially when they do 20. I'd honestly prefer fewer uh, at higher quality. But Awaken Realms isn't necessarily that heavy on the miniature aspect as they are on just uh, using miniatures to sell their board games. They're very much designers rather than, you know, miniature lovers. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I feel more care could be in that department. But anyway, that's my opinion. It's my opinion. It's my opinion. All right. Uh, in the far reaches of the forest, you will also meet, be able to meet a corrupted druid. This is the half leech, half octopus, half I carry a harpy from Aeon Trespass Odyssey. And look, on his nice druid walking stick, he has some beautiful, oh my goodness, wow, I did not expect that tonight. I don't want to dwell on that, actually, but that that's giving me some strong Etherfield Mortis vibes. Uh, Mortis has, obviously, the, the weirdness does very strange things to the body. It looks like a second puberty. But here we have a leech man monster half- Man have leech. They could have called him a mana leech, but I guess mana Pete already took that name. Um, it's weird. I don't know. I mean, is this foreshadowing to Awakened Realms' next Cthulhu game coming after ISS Vanguard? Potentially. Perhaps this is a uh, Easter egg of sorts. Gotta have it. Next, while most humans are consumed by the weird, some are capable of forming a strange symbiosis with the chaotic powers. Bing Kyok. Wet Nurse in Gaelic is a woman who adopted a small crowd of weird spawns, nursing them, offering them protection, and feeding them with the flesh of travelers. So, oh, right. This one's actually, at first I hated it, and now the more I look at it, the more I hate it. No, just kidding. <laughs> it's actually really cool. I actually like this miniature quite a bit, um, because I never imagined a, uh, a, 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 a old lady with a basket of, uh, octopi in her basket. So, um, if you have been looking for a, uh, a crone with a bunch of octopus babies, this is essentially the Octomom, I guess, in miniature form. A interesting homage, an interesting choice. Um, moving down, we have a very, a more interesting, a more thematic and more lore-based individual, which is the Horned Warden. The Horned Warden is chosen by the Stag Father to guard the forest, from weirdness and from men. It is a very interesting, actually looks like a piece of furniture or, you know, when you go to those like steak houses, you feel like you'd see one of these hanging up on one of the walls. Uh, interesting, interesting beast. I love the asymmetry of the upper body with the lower body, but very cool. I mean, you see like a shrimp dangling from him, uh, nice rope details. Again, the antlers don't look very defined. So and that, remember, these renders are the best image of the actual miniature, unless it's like the core box. But these, I don't know. Uh, some of their shapes look very blobby to begin with, and it can only get blobbier, unfortunately. So, uh, while Horned Wardens uh, keep human settlers out of the forest, the northern coast of the island is patrolled by Unchained War Beasts, which is kind of a cross between a satyr, a bear, a wolf, a man, and a... Uh... Yeah, that's about it. So, this is the Chimera of the Tainted Grail universe, and it's just a man with a, uh, a mana bear. There's a, a very interesting mana something uh, theme that is running through all these miniatures and uh, his arm what happened to his arm that that anatomy just doesn't make sense to me but um interesting he has a cape of chains uh, wait is he supposed to be unchained or is he chained or is he just two chains I don't know that looks like more than two chains but again honestly uh, these eh, they're like meh you know they're just meh um, next one is, let's see, ah, the most powerful four-dweller in the game, a true highborn knight of their race, mounted atop an armored hammerbeak. Doomwing is a challenge even bigger than fearsome reclaimers. Yes, that is exactly what I need, something even stronger than reclaimers. I couldn't even handle a normal four-dweller. But they've brought an even bigger, badder miniature that is not represented in this uh, update, unfortunately. So I'm not even sure if the final graphic art has been finalized for that. I'm not sure if the render has been made for that. Probably not. I'm not even sure if the sketch has been completed. So I am not sure how long the pledge manager will be open for, but it is very gutsy of them to uh, assume that many of us will spend 50 pounds on an impulse for miniatures that have not even been... Um, fully fleshed out or conceptualized, so. I'm not sure why they're choosing this moment to release those, but it's possibly because we're getting so close to wave two that they're trying to hit that deadline. So, I don't know. And then, oh, so those are all of the um, miniatures that will be associated with the past. So the Red Thirst is not the, Chris, uh, the ghost of Christmas future, it is the ghost of Christmas past. And now we're looking into the future 
with uh, what happens to the frigid expansive expanses of the last night campaign. So, what you can expect in an Ice Age tundra-like environment is, of course, a gigalorum, a spider. Because what is going to survive the frigid, cold, uh, frozen over Tainted Grail universe than a big old spider with big old man hands? So, um, that is <laughs> that is what you can expect in the future, literally. Not only that, but something else very much adapted to the frigid, icy climbs is a um, orphaned heart. When I saw this, I was I was actually kind of excited. It looks very tentacly, um, if that's a word. It's not. And the more I looked at it, though, the sloppier it actually became. So, I mean, the big spider, yeah, it's like a spider with man hands. I mean, they're basically just taking animals and putting humanoid features on them, which has been done before, I mean, but could have been done better. Um, but here we have the orphan heart, and the more you look at it, the more you realize it's just a clump of mud. A clump of mud with these kind of like, ah, I mean, they're supposed to be arteries, but they just look like uh, sea cucumbers that are just erupting out of this, uh, I guess, Venusaur turned bad, turned uh, grime uh, figurine. I, I wouldn't even call this a miniature. It just kind of looks like a mess, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel it's, it's just a weird miniature to showcase and to stand behind, you know? <sighs> Apparently it's related to Bjor's backstory. I feel like that was a big spoiler that they put in this update, but I don't know. And Team Boxy, don't even get me started. If you if Team Boxy starts supporting Orphan Heart, I don't even know what I'm gonna do. But anyway, um, that's the Orphan Heart. And moving down, this is actually kind of a surprising lore surprise, and this is the Fachan, uh, which um is apparently a one-legged, one-armed, one-eyed giant, which is surprising to me because that is actually the anatomical layout of the Fomorians, the Fomorians that we're supposed to encounter in the Red Death uh, expansion campaign, which your boy backed. And so it's very interesting to see the Fomorian uh, archetype depicted here on Tainted Grail, the continent of Avalon, and they're not actually saving that for the uh, Fomorian-based uh, expansion. So these are the uh, what the Fomorians are mythologically depicted as, one-limbed, one-armed, one-eyed giants. So that's actually kind of cool to see that um, See that lore depicted here in the uh, the expansion? Um, so it's interesting, and that is what you can look forward to in the future. And not only that, but a uh, alien trechend. Man, dang. Gaelic is not my first language. But um, this is definitely the showstopper miniature. This is on the box uh, cover, and I and I was actually kind of disappointed. I was disappointed because this is half a miniature. It's coming out of the ground. I feel like it's a huge huge cop-out. Uh, where's the other half of its body? And again, it's just a humanoid man form with animal heads and wings coming out of it. It's it's not even extremely creative. It's, it's really just human parts replaced with animal parts. So that is basically this entire expansion with the eyes on its wings straight out of Etherfield. You can see it's kind of just bursting out of uh, one of the scenarios in Etherfields. And this monster is created by the Druids as potentially a protector of sorts that has now outlived its, its unfortunately uh, deceased masters. Um, but that's that, and then we have a very kind of bland glass steeg, which is kind of a succubus-like figure, easy to pass over and like, I don't know, just, just the facial, it's like, doesn't that look straight out of Etherfield's, that face, that's definitely a uh, sweet scent. Ah, I don't know, the cross-pollination just feels weird to me. Then we have the Mad Warrior, which is basically what I look like, and this guy apparently channels weird spasms, that's what he says anyway, and he <laughs> turns them into explosive body morphing powers. So he channels mad spasms, again, the lower body just kind of isn't there. Oh man, nip slip. And uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say, it just looks kind of amorphous, blobby, and it doesn't really scream Avalon to me, it doesn't scream Tainted Grail, it doesn't have that same skeletal charm that we're used to. But the concept is interesting. People who can actually channel uh, the weirdness. Um, I think that's a big uh, theme that we're seeing in both the future and the past expansions. People who are adapting to the weirdness. But I wish that were kind of a... Um, well, I haven't played that played the game too deep. I haven't gone past chapter 4. Dang it. But we are seeing people who are learning to channel and uh, actually be assimilated into Avalon. For better or for worse. Then we have the Hooded Crow. Again, another Etherfields-like figure. 
Um, I feel like the Baron Crow is hidden under all these rags. Um, but again, just a lot of things that are obscuring any meaningful details. So you have all these ribbons. Who is this guy? Why is he, are they just trying to cover him with a bunch of stuff? And is that the concept? A guy who uh, uh, got TP'd? <laughs> but, um, oh no, he's not even wearing any shoes. But, um, I don't know. I can't, I can't get excited about these. This one's actually interesting. I love the smaller, more intricate beasts. I feel like if you're trying to survive in Avalon, being smaller is very advantageous. Either that or being the biggest beast in the planet uh, is also key to survival. I mean, natural selection is a thing, right? Even if you're a weird monster. But I like these ones. I like the small elements. I like the backstory that they want to eat your teeth. Um, which seems bizarre to me. That seems like the most unappetizing part of the human body. Um, but uh, maybe it's like bits of like Tic Tacs or candies or things like that. But those are the Fwathan. This game is going to give me a permanent lisp by the end of this video. Uh, we have the Torch Bearer, um, which is featured on their main campaign page. Let me see. So there we have our Torch Bearer. Um, I'm not sure what's the lore about her. When travelers see a girl holding a chopped off hand with burning fingers, at first they want to run away, but when they are freezing to death, the torchbearer may be their only hope. So this is a girl, I guess, who basically looks like one of our shattered men here, and she's holding a torch. Oh, never mind, she's holding a hand that is holding a torch. Plot twist, gotcha. Tainted Grail, always surprising you. That's actually pretty cool. I kind of like it, actually. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> not much else to say. Then the Allfather's Inquisition, this is uh, basically another angry mob, but in this case they're holy angry mobs there. They're righteous anger fueling their murder spree. So, um, uh, it, it is essentially the angry mob, I mean, you don't need another figurine of an angry mob, they're just kind of digging deep for the, you know, similar, similar roots, um, more angry people. And that is basically it, I mean, you can buy the... Uh, King Arthur add-on, we're not even going to talk about the uh, the game mat, never really asked for it. The game, I don't know, the game's layout just kind of hurts my neck sometimes. But that is it, and I mean there are some miniatures that we haven't seen yet. Uh, let's see, because in total that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's still, I think, about four miniatures that we haven't seen yet. Doomwing, we haven't seen the Pale Lady, uh, we haven't seen maybe Boxy, I don't know, maybe Boxy will make another appearance, I, I hope not. But um, that is basically uh, the monster miniatures for um, the past and the future. And I honestly don't see why people are getting so upset because, you know, this is honestly not worth it. <laughs> it's very clear uh, that miniatures have very little role in the actual gameplay. They do not improve the game whatsoever, and um, I don't know, even if these were limited edition and you could, uh, well, I guess they are technically limited edition, they would not be um, in demand in the future. They're just kind of terrible. And some of them haven't even been conceptualized fully. So, that's 16 miniatures that they have conceptualized, only four I suppose that are missing, but uh, at, at the same, same time, none of these miniatures are really sticking out in terms of must-have. You have to make your decision whether these plastic bits will truly bring you the happiness you desire in your life. In my opinion, in Jordan's humble opinion on Wait Your Turn, these monster miniatures are just not worth it. Especially, whoa, $65.79, that's American money. I'm not spending that. I'm saving that up for Senku Kushin or like, I don't know, and Trespass Cycles or something like that. But anyway, that is my humble opinion on the Monsters of Avalon past and future. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So <laughs> uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for waiting patiently for my videos as they come out. And oh, how could I forget? A huge shout out to Renato Yazu from Brazil. So thank you for joining our patrons on Patreon. I got you, got you back got you back, got your back. So thank you for joining our wonderful uh, cadre of patrons. So once again, your support makes this channel run, motivates me, and gives me the enthusiasm that I need to hopelessly trash these, uh, these games. So thank you all for watching. Thank you all for joining me today on Wait Your Turn, and I hope you all have a great week, great day, and a great life. So thank you all for waiting, and now it's your turn. Mm -hmm.